and welcome to the Good Doctors Diagnose for Monday, August 19th. We are, as ever, if you're still new to us, welcome. <laughs> we're excited. My name is Dr. Kristen. And my name is Dr. Erin. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about a word that has become the buzziest buzzword that ever buzzed <laughs> in culture these days, which is diversity. Diversity. Which we feel fairly strongly after all of our academic and also just life experience that the culture is not having a productive conversation about it. We're certainly talking about it a lot, but we're not really sure it's that productive. And through some of our workshops that Dr. Donnelly has been giving on diversity, she came and inclusion, she came to a, a different definition or a different understanding that we wanted to share with you. So first of all, diversity is a reality in every organization and even within every human being. Mm -hmm. Everyone is diverse and therefore every organization is diverse. Diversity is not your goal. No. Diversity is your reality. Inclusion is the goal and privilege is the barrier. What do you mean by privilege? Privilege is kind of understand is all the things about you that you don't recognize that other people don't have. So one of the really important things we talk about when we talk about diversity is it, is it doesn't just mean kind of the more obvious and overt cultural differences or religious differences. There or can, racial or ethnic or, differences. Or racial or ethnic or national dif nationality differences. It can be something as simple as people from two different parts of the same state. Correct. We are both from uh, and live in Pennsylvania. And there are a lot of cultural differences between where I live in Pittsburgh and where Kristen lives in Philly. So it's understanding that even if your workplace population might not be presenting as diverse as we understand it in terms of ethnic, nationality, religion, all of those things we mentioned, there's still a lot of cultural differences that could be going on within your people. And it's really important that you understand what that means to them because they are bringing those cultural viewpoints to the workplace and that is informing how they do their work and how they engage with other people. And it also may be informing how you work with your clients or customers or um, how, whoever you serve as an organization. So one of the most fun activities that I get to do in these workshops is something called diversity bingo. I'm not the only one who does it. There's lots of folks that do it. Um, but it's really, really important. And one of the squares that I always have on it is the whole premise is that you have to walk around the room and find somebody who qualifies for that bingo, card, that bingo space. And then once you get bingo, I give you chocolate. Um, it's really high stakes. It's important to bribe people. Really important to bribe <laughs> people. social interactions. Um, what I also love, by the way, is like chocolate is the goal and there's still always people that take it as like cutthroat, like I'm about to give them like $20,000, yeah. <laughs> which I appreciate because I will compete harder for chocolate than probably $20,000. It is a piece of Hershey's. <laughs> um, yeah, like guys, hi. Um, so one of the squares that I always have on there is find somebody who grew up on a farm. And after one of the more recent workshops, I had somebody come up to me and say, it literally until this moment never occurred to me that growing up on a working farm would mean that someone would see things like vacation differently. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I had this incredible conversation with this person. I did not grow up on a farm, but um, I know some people that did and they've talked about how different it made them and um, what that kind of looks like. Some of my um, extended in-laws are um, farmers over in Ireland and what kind of, how that shapes your culture. My mother-in-law grew up on a working farm, for instance. And so what does that kind of look like? So again, it's those little things that you wouldn't necessarily even maybe know by a surface conversation with somebody. Um, and so one of the services that we offer at Abbey Research is not only workshops where we play diversity bingo, but um, lots of other fun games, and lots of other fun games, but direct one-on-one -on -one work with your organization to help you navigate the particular privileges that your organization, the people of your organization have that are creating the barriers to inclusion. So for instance, what a big privilege for a lot of Americans is to be able-bodied. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't occur to us that like the, that wheelchair ramp isn't particularly helpful or the bathrooms are down a flight of stairs at a restaurant and no one can get to them. That is an ability privilege. One one particular brand. And so we taught, we spend a lot of time with organizations helping them break down their privileges. Privileges is not inherently a wrong thing. It's a natural thing. It is what it is. And so again, but that is the bar those are the barriers to inclusion. So we like to work with folks to help them tear down those barriers. So if any of that sounds like something that might be useful or beneficial for your organization, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us via whatever 
mechanism you are watching this video, um, we are always happy to go in and present this uh, to organizations and help you figure out how you can best serve your people and how you can get the best out of them. And in the meantime, we challenge you to think about one of your privileges that perhaps you haven't really thought of before. So that's it for today, Monday, August 19th, and we'll see you next time on The Good Doctors Diagnose. Bye. Bye. Thank you.